This is the lesson plan for the SunMed SunStim Pro, the peripheral nerve stimulator available at NUH. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the device for its intended purpose, operate it safely and competently, use appropriate accessories, respond to alerts and alarms, have knowledge of moving and handling ergonomics when moving or repositioning the device, and be able to clean and store the device appropriately. The SunStim Pro Peripheral Nerve Stimulator is a battery-powered device intended for the monitoring of the magnitude of neuromuscular block in general anaesthesia by delivering an electrical stimulus near a peripheral motor nerve. This device should only be used by staff who have been trained and assessed as competent as per the NUH Medical Devices Training Policy. Pre-use checks Before using the device, Check for obvious signs of physical damage to the equipment and provided connectors. Check the service sticker to ensure that it is within its service period. The battery LED is steady green when the device is turned on. A battery replacement is needed when the battery LED flashes during use. Make sure all accessories are available. In case of device damage or malfunction, do not attempt any self-repairs. Standard device operation. Nerve stimulation can be carried out using surface electrodes. Connect the lead wire with the black plug to the black or negative output connector and the lead wire with the red plug with the red or positive output connector. The nerve stimulator should be positioned over the selected nerve prior to anaesthesia induction. The SunStim Pro peripheral nerve stimulator is turned on and off by holding this button for 3 seconds. Once on, the device will be in standby mode and no pulses will be produced. These buttons on the right hand side of the device are used to adjust the stimulation amplitude of the output current, which may range from 0 to 70 milliamps. If the output current level setting is 0, no stimulation current will be delivered. Stimulation frequency patterns may be activated by pressing one of four touch panel switches. The pulse LED will flash yellow each time a pulse is generated. Remember to turn off after use to avoid unnecessary battery wastage. Types of stimuli Double burst stimulation or DBS. This produces two short sequences of 50 Hz tetanic stimuli separated by 0.75 seconds. This stimulation should not be repeated at intervals of less than 12 seconds. Twitch. This produces twitch stimulation. When pressed and held down, it is automatically repeated one pulse per second until the button is released. This button can be turned off by pressing the DBS or train of four buttons. Tetanus. This produces rapidly repeated stimuli when pressed and held down, provided the electrical stimuli is set to 100 Hz. This default can be changed to 50 Hz by opening up the battery cover and removing the battery. The slide switch is located within the battery compartment and can be used to set the desired frequency. Once this step is completed, reconnect the battery and close the battery cover prior to using the unit again. The tetanus stimulation should not be repeated more often than every two minutes due to post-tetanic facilitation. Train of 4, or TOF, generates four equal intensity single pulses in a period of two seconds. A 15 second period between stimuli is recommended to prevent post-tetanic facilitation. Peripheral nerve monitoring sites. The site of stimulation should be away from the surgical field and its location accessible to the anaesthesia provider especially if visual or tactile nerve monitoring is being used.
electrical stimulus can be performed in the following sites. The ulnar nerve. The leads should be placed either along the medial aspect of the distal forearm, over the sulcus of the medial epicondyle of the humerus, or on the hand by placing the negative electrode onto the palm between the base of the thumb and the second finger and the positive electrode in the same position on the dorsal side of the hand. The tibial nerve. The positive electrode will sit over the tibial nerve if placed posterior to the medial malleolus and anterior to the Achilles tendon at the ankle. The facial nerve. The negative electrode can be placed anterior to the tragus of the ear and the positive electrode can be placed posterior and inferior to the lobe over the mastoid process. However, this site is not recommended for assessment or reversal of muscle relaxation. Battery maintenance and replacement. This device shall be used with a 9 volt alkaline battery only. Prior to battery replacement, make sure the device is turned off. Slide off the battery compartment cover. Remove the old battery and install the new battery ensuring correct polarity. Place the battery cover back into the original position. Cleaning and decontamination. Clean the device using green Clinel wipes and wipe down the entire nerve stimulator for at least 15 seconds. Let the device dry at least 5 minutes before using it on a patient. Ensure all obvious signs of dirt and contamination are removed. Store the device in a clean, dry environment. Troubleshooting. If there is an error or failure of the device, remove the device from use after ensuring the patient is safe and unharmed. Complete a clinical engineering decontamination form detailing any error codes or messages. If the device is involved in an incident, ensure the Datex number is recorded on the decontamination form. Ideally, return the device to clinical engineering as it was set up and used. If this is not possible, take an image of the setup and ensure this is uploaded to the Datex incident form. Warnings and cautions. Do not use this device for nerve localization for anaesthetic regional block. Do not use this nerve stimulator in patients with skin diseases in the location of the nerve or in proximity of equipment which produces electromagnetic fields or microwaves. Do not modify any components of this equipment. Do not use this nerve stimulator in case of battery leakage. The nerve stimulator may be hazardous to patients with implanted electrical medical devices. Correlate the nerve reaction with patient's clinical condition as there may be a discrepancy in the degree of relaxation and of the monitored muscle at the site of surgery. Titanic nerve stimulus should be performed only after the anaesthetic has been administered. Stimulus current must be increased gradually until supramaximal stimulus is achieved. Applying currents greater than necessary for supramaximal stimulation may increase the risk of skin burns and inaccuracy due to direct muscle stimulation. Before use, the patient's skin should be cleaned and degreased with a skin wipe to reduce impedance and completely dried. This area should be free of excessive hair, scar tissue or any other lesions. Avoid any contact of liquids with the device. Do not attach lead wires or bipolar probe electrodes to the device until the power is completely off. Do not touch the actual battery and the patient simultaneously. Battery should be removed if the nerve stimulator is not likely to be used for some time. Caution should be used when switching between double burst stimulation and train of force stimulation. Up to 92 seconds may be required before the responses are stabilised.